Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Sunny Joy McMillan. Uh, I am an attorney turned life coach in Seattle. I have a little radio show called Sunny in Seattle, and uh, Sarah Landon has been a guest on my show several times. Um, and what we're doing here today is uh, just a little bit of a, a follow up or a continuation of what we did on the air because there are you know some tight constraints when you're doing live on air stuff, and we wanted to continue the conversation with the council. So today we'll be. What we hope is the first in a series of question and answer sessions with the council, taking some of the things that they have brought to us before and just continuing to expand that wisdom. And for those of you who aren't familiar with Sarah Landon and the council, Sarah is a globally celebrated transformational leader, spiritual teacher, and channel of the council. The council is an energetic presence of non-physical beings whose intention is to assist humanity in reaching new levels of expanded awareness and higher level consciousness. Together, Sarah and the Council are fueling spiritual growth and personal transformation all around the world, leading the way for evolutionary advancements in human potential and the acceleration of global convergence. Um, So together, what we'll be doing here today is continuing to welcome in the new earth and everything that we as humans in this earth experience can do to help bring that in. So I hope you enjoy what you'll hear today. And now we will bring in the Council. We are so pleased to have the opportunity to speak with you on this fine day, our friend. How are you? I'm doing well, Council. It's so good to connect with you again. It's so good to come together with you and to to expand on the questions that we discussed in our last conversation and and take this conversation to a a new place. And the the shift and the expansion that will come with that will be fantastic. So we, we are excited about this conversation. Me too. And, you know, on that note, you know I've got my list of questions ready, and you know what's been on my heart. You know what's on the heart of all of the people who will be listening to this um, now and in the future. (laughs) So I'm going to actually open the floor to you if you uh, would like to do introduce where we need to go today. (laughs) That is a wonderful question. So we begin by reminding you that this is a vibrational experience, that, that while our words are important, that this is a vibrational experience. So whether you're listening to this now or, or in a week from now or a month from now or listening to it again and again, each time you, you will reach a new level of vibrational frequency, of awareness, of expansion, of, of taking thought beyond that which you thought possible before and shifting beyond the limitations of the human experience. There is so much available to you. There is guidance here for you. There is an easy, effortless way to everything that you want. There is harmonious relationships. There is harmonious relationships with with people, with money, with the universe, with everything that you want. And we bring forth, number one, to help you remember who you really are, the truth of who you are, that you are a vibrational being here having a human experience to expand your soul, to express all that you are in human form, and to manifest in physical form that which you really want. And this life experience is meant to be joyful for you. It's meant to be fun. It's meant to be a grand adventure where you explore frequencies in the physical plane. This is, this is new information. We have not said this to you before, but we want you to understand the purpose of the human experience is for you to come forth and explore frequency. Explore frequency. So when you are experiencing judgment, you are exploring a frequency. When you are experiencing harmonious relationships, that is a frequency. When you are experiencing lack and limitation, that is a frequency. When you're experiencing greed in your world, that is a frequency. When you are, are experiencing abundance, and bliss, and, and living your, your greater calling, living a life of purpose and meaning, that is a frequency. You are here to explore all of these things and then to decide through, through sifting through the contrast of life, through, through sifting through how, how good or not good these frequencies feel, to, to create the life you want by tuning into the frequency of what you want to experience because it will feel good, because it will feel expansive, because it will feel joyful, because it will feel peaceful and harmonious and fun. But so many times you get you get so stuck in the expectation of what you want, you get stuck in the what should have, could have, the stories that you're telling, that that you forget that 
that this is a grand journey. This is an adventure. You came here to explore and to have fun and not to take it all so seriously. So we come forth to, to help you remember what you intended when you chose this life experience and then to, to assist you in creating the life that you do want in the most easy, effortless, and harmonious way, the way you intended it to be. Does this make sense to you, our friend? Yes, it does. And that was actually one of my first questions was um, one of the things that stood out to me when I hear you all come through is that the vibration is the most important thing. If we address that first, then everything else falls into place. But it's kind of hard, I would say, in my experience as a human to get that vibration where it needs to be first. I always think, oh, if I have all of the money I need, if I have the house, if I have the work, if I have the relationship, then I will feel better. What can you tell us as humans about how to get that vibration addressed first and foremost? So, so that, that is a wonderful question, and, and let us explain this to you. The most important thing for, for well, let us go back. There, there are multiple ways for you to, to accomplish what you want. You can force, and you can effort, and, and you can work hard, and you can sacrifice, and, and you, can, you can stress and you can worry and, and you can make things happen, that is a way. That is a way, and we're not saying that it's not the right way. We just come forth to remind you of the way you intended it to be and to remind you and help you remember that there is an easy, effortless, harmonious way to what you want. And so it, it is different than the way you have learned in your limited system. So we, we will not say that the, the forcing and efforting your way to what you want is the wrong way, but, but it's not the most efficient way. It's not the easiest, most effortless way to what you want. And so we remind you that this life experience can be so much more fun for you when you, when you live your life in alignment to flow. When you, when you get into a vibrational alignment with what you want and then allow it to come to you. And so... So many times you have learned how to force and effort your way to what you want. You, you sift through the clarity of life and you, you decide what you want, but usually you're deciding what you want from a place of not having it and the feeling of not having it being so awful, the, the frequency of not having it being so awful that, that you decide what you do want to create, but you never shift into the frequency of what you want. And so your only way of getting it is forcing and efforting, and that's how you end up exhausted and worn out, and your bodies break down, and you have stress, and you have you have aging, and you have you have disharmony in your relationship, and and you're looking for the meaning and the purpose, and you're looking for something more, and what you're looking for, the something more, is is the way you knew it was to be, and there's a very different different approach to things when you're living your life in alignment with with divine will and the divine plan for your life and free will. So you live on a planet where there is free will. Not all planets are this way, but, but where you are, you have free will to choose. You can choose to feel awful. You can choose, you can choose to feel stress and worry and force and effort. You can choose that, that your belief that the only way you can be successful is to work hard and make money and sacrifice. You have the choice to make that your truth. That, that is how free you are. You are so free that you can choose to, to live in lack and limitation your entire life. You, you can choose to, to suffer. You can choose bondage, even though you're more free than you can ever imagine. Or you can choose joy. You can choose happiness. You can choose being appreciative of your life. You can choose to consciously focus on what you want. You can choose to, to be grateful for all that you have. It's a choice. And the other choice, even beyond free will of, of choosing how you feel, is to choose the divine will for your life, to choose the divine will and to get into alignment with the divine will. And that says that, that you, you trust that there is a divine plan for your life, that you came here, for a reason, for a purpose, and that you can't get it wrong, that you can never be too late, you can't be too old, you can't be too slow, you, you can't be too young, because there's a divine plan. And, 
And then your job becomes to be in alignment with that divine plan and allow the divine will to express through you. So you may look outside of you and say, that's the kind of house I want, and I want that house. I choose with my free will for that house to be to be here. I choose for it to be in Seattle. But But the divine plan for your life might be trying to move you somewhere different. It might be trying to move you to California because there's something there for you. There's information there for you. There's, there's, there's data for you to collect about, about your life experience in, in alignment with expressing your purpose in the world you intended. And yet when you, when you hold so tightly to what you want and the way it has to be, you, you don't make room for the divine plan to unfold effortlessly for you. And so, so the second thing we want you to understand is that that many times you you will look at, for example, a house that you want, and and you'll get excited about it, and and you'll you'll put yourself into the frequency of it through pictures or going online and looking at websites and images or videos or pictures, or maybe you even go into the house, or maybe you start going into houses and you start you start collecting data about what you really want in your home. But then when you go back to your home, and you recognize that it's not what you want, that it's that right now, this current now moment, you live in a home that's different, you, you completely cut yourself off from the frequency of what you want. So, so now all of a sudden you're looking around you and you're saying, but this isn't what I want. And, and the, the, the vibration of not wanting that anymore, the pushing against it, the resistance, keeps you stuck in that same place. And then sometimes you have an experience of, of sifting through the contrast of life and you, you know what you want and, and you get into the frequency of it and you, you do a good job of no matter what your current life experience is, keeping yourself in the vibrational frequency of what you want. Once you've explored that vibration, you remember how to get back there. But then you, you try to force and effort your way to it instead of knowing that, that, that being in vibrational alignment to it Focusing your attention on it and, and, and allowing the divine will to lead you and guide you through inspiration and inspired action that you tune into through your vibration, that, that it will easily and effortlessly come to you. And sometimes it's not just that thing that you want that comes to you. It's, it's, it's something so much better that from your, your, your vibration, when you came across that, that desire, had not even had not even taken into account the, the expansion that you had, had gotten to. And so when you allow it to come through inspiration, it not only comes, but it's so much better because the divine plan for all of you, each and every one of you, is so much greater than, than you even uh, allow yourself. It's so much more. It's here for you. It is here for you. So much more. Your life can be beyond your wildest dreams and more extraordinary than you ever thought possible. But but that means you have harmonious relationships. So so sometimes you need you need more. You you need something more in order to be able to 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 change your vibrational set point to match the life that you want. So so maybe you want a a a, a different home and a different career or a different partner or a different relationship with the partner that you have. And so you, you are expanding just through the desire for more. But, but you're also in the physical experience. And so sometimes there's, there's skills and there's, there's abilities and there's gifts that, that will serve you in being able to not only manifest what you want, but being able to hold that vibration. And so that you can maintain a new higher vibrational set point. And sometimes you don't realize that what you're going through is, is a wonderful experience that was set up for you specifically to, to gain the, the skills and the abilities you need to fulfill your divine purpose, to carry forth the divine plan in your life. Does this make sense to you, our friend? Yes, but I'm like coming out of my chair. I have so many questions now that we're talking about this. So, so let us just give you one one piece to consider. So, so if if so, say for example that you wanted a, a, a ten million dollars, 
and that the divine plan for your life at some point was that you were going to manifest a large sum of money. When, if, if you knew that going into this, if you were, say, 18 years old, and you said, I, I'm ready, I want the money now, I'm ready. <laughs> if, if you would have gotten it then versus now, what do you think would be different? Do you think you'd still have the money if you got it at 18? Heck no. No. Would you Would you have spent it on the same things at 18 as you might spend it on now? No. <laughs> no. No. So so what happened from, from 18 to now? You had incredible experiences. You collected data about what you want and don't want. You, you, you expanded. You grew. You gained skills and abilities. And, and you shifted your mindset, and, and you got clarity around life. You, you got into alignment with your purpose. You, you did some things differently. And from your, your point now, you can say, I'm so grateful that that thing I really wanted or thought I really wanted back then didn't come because who I am now, I, w- I would do it totally differently. Does this make sense? It does. Yeah, yeah. absolutely it does. So, so, so go on to your next question. Let's continue along. This. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> um, so then my question would be to allow for the divine plan. How do we not get in our own way as humans? I, I just speaking from my own personal experience, I get graspy. I have attachment to certain outcomes. How, what is our daily practice? for opening up to the divine plan and the appropriate, perfect balance between our co-creation as humans in this physical reality versus allowing our highest self, our guides, our whatever's happening on the other side of the veil to do all the serendipitous, awesome things that are going to meet us halfway. Is that too much of a question? <laughs> no, that's a wonderful question. And and so, so you, you have... a a limited viewpoint in the human experience because you, the you you know as you, the personality you, is focused in a body. And you are limited by your your perceptions of life that are are interpreted through your senses. What you see, what you touch, what what you hear, these types of things. So you have a very limited viewpoint. Your soul, the, the, the unlimited part of you, has has an unlimited viewpoint, has an unlimited vantage point. It sees everything. It knows the shortest path to, to what you want. It knows what, what, what path to get you there. It knows what's coming for you. It knows the shortcuts. And it, it knows that maybe directing you on this path would, would provide gifts and, and, and blessings that maybe going this other way wouldn't. It, it would direct you to the people that you need and didn't need. But from your viewpoint as a human, you, have, you, you can't see all of this. You, you live in a limited system. You have a limited viewpoint. And so the reason we talk to you about vibration is so that you can, you can tune in and align with that unlimited part of you, which is your soul, which is the inspiration. The, the, the word inspiration is, is as you have many of you have figured out, is the word in spirit, in spirit. So when you're in spirit, you're aligned with inspiration. You're aligned with inspired action, actions that come from source, from spirit, from that grander, unlimited viewpoint. Your guides also have that, but you, you also, from that place, have access to everyone else's soul, everyone else's higher self. And so when you're tuned in there, things Things unfold easily and effortlessly and harmoniously in your life. But from your viewpoint, you can't see all of that. So you think nothing's happening. So when you come back down into the vibration of the human experience and you come back down into the the belief that you are separate and just in this body and you come back to relying on your senses that are through your perception, perceiving your life experience, it seems like nothing's happening. And, And then... And then your brain says, but nothing's happening, so we better find some actions to take. We better, we better go make things happen. We better force an effort just because nothing's happening. And you couldn't be farther from the truth. But sometimes what happens is 
in your attempts to try to make something happen, you start off in the wrong direction. You you start off in the wrong direction. So so let us give you an example. If if you are in New York and you you decided that that your dream, your desire was to was to go to Italy. And that was your 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 plan. And and you tuned in and maybe that even came from inspiration. Maybe it came from divine inspiration. A, a divine idea of of drawing you to Italy, that, that, that there was something there for you, that you wanted to have that experience. And so you, you watch things about Italy, you get excited about it, you, you go out and, and you, start, you start collecting information about what you want to do when you go to Italy, and, and, and you, you decide that this came from inspiration, and, and you know this is going to be a wonderful thing for you, this is, desire is there. And then you say, oh, well, I will, I will turn this over to allowing the divine plan around this and divine timing in the divine right way for me to go to Italy. And then a week passes, and you're still sitting in New York. <laughs> and you're saying, but I need to go to Italy. It's part of the divine plan. It came from divine inspiration. I know it. I must go. So, so you decide to set out in a boat because you have waited a week, and it's been too long. <laughs> and, and no longer are you going to wait for divine timing in the divine right way because... You can make this happen now. <laughs> and then you set out in a boat to, to get to Europe. And, and then all of a sudden a storm comes and you have to turn around and go back. That's, that's divine intervention, our friend. Because, because the, the path you were going to take was going to be hard. It was going to be difficult. You, you might still get there, but, but then the storm comes and you have to go back to Europe. Yeah. And... And you're you're frustrated because you were already on your way, and maybe you were already already halfway across the Atlantic Ocean, and you had to turn back. And then the next day, you get a call, and your friend says, "I I have an extra ticket to to, to fly to Rome because a friend of mine who was supposed to go can't go. Would you like to fly to Rome today with me?" Mm-hmm. And you say, "Well, yes." And you get on the airplane, and you 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 fly first class and the ticket was free and you only have one stop and everything was smooth and effortless and then and then now all of a sudden two days later you have arrived in Rome completely rejuvenated you you flew comfortably in luxury to your destination where if the storm wouldn't have turned you back you'd still be out in the middle of the Atlantic somewhere freezing cold seasick sunburned exhausted and still having a month of sailing left ahead of you. <laughs> Does this make sense? Absolutely. Yeah, I can totally see putting myself in the boat and setting out into the Atlantic, not waiting. And so then it yeah. just, then I ask, well, so I guess I just need the validation. And I, I'm sure a lot of other people who will hear this do too. Can we really trust? Can we sit back and wait for the first class ticket? How do we know when it's coming? <laughs> but you don't know when it's coming. And that's the that's the fun of the journey, our friend. <laughs> fun from That's your perspective. <laughs> it, it, it is fun from our perspective, but it could be much more fun from your perspective because because here's, it, it either has to come or something better has to come, our friend. But, but what happens is, so, so we'll go back to this example. And, and here's what usually happens with most of you. You... You got back to your home after you got partway across the Atlantic, and then the storm came, and you had to you had to turn back. And then you went back to your house, and you you're exhausted and you're tired, and and you're you're upset with the universe because things aren't working out, and and so you decide to stop answering your phone. You just you turn your phone off, and you say, I'm I'm just not going to participate anymore because this isn't working, and you shut yourself off, and so. Your friend called, but you never got the message because, because you were down in the muck, feeling sorry for yourself, pushing against life in resistance, angry that it didn't work out, feeling like the victim. And instead of responding when, when the inspiration came. And so, and, and here's the other part of this. It might have taken two days or three days or four days for your friend to call. But in that time, you, you would be miserable. You would be, you would be frustrated. You would be impatient. You'd be trying to force other things to happen. Or, or because you forced an effort so much, your, 
you're so exhausted that you can't get yourself back into vibrational alignment. And so, so there's no judgment from our side ever. We, we love you all so very much. We, we know that, that from your, your vantage point that, that, that you can't see all of this. And so that is why trust is so important. That is, that is why we, we talk about these things. So, so, so start finding, start, start giving yourself the, the opportunity to trust this. Start, start playing with this until you, you do realize that, that this way is not only easy and effortless, but it is efficient, it is harmonious, and it is expeditious. Hmm. It is, but sometimes you're, you're waiting on the circumstances to be aligned for you. And so, so that is what we call infinite patience, our friend. When you have infinite patience, when you have divine patience, you, you know that, that your soul is out ahead of you. It has the, the grandest viewpoint that it's orchestrating things on your behalf. It's moving things towards you, and and you can also know that whatever is in front of you right now in this now moment is the most important thing. And when you can be at peace with that, knowing that more is coming, this this process will be easy for you. Does this make sense? It does. And I have a follow up question. <laughs> very good. Very good. We we're, we're going to we're going to keep going until you say. Oh, I get it. That's oh. what we're going for. Here. I don't know Keep that we going. have that much Keep recording going. space, Council, <laughs> for me to it's finally get it. It's a vibration that you will tune into, our friend. So, so, like we said, our words are important, but, but what's going on here is your vibration. So keep going. <laughs> okay, awesome. Okay, so something you said a moment ago, something better has to come. So, prefacing this question with... Um, and I, I would love it if you would correct my understanding of how these things work. But we come here, as you said, to experience, uh, it's a vibrational experience, to experience judgment, to experience sadness, to experience happiness. So there are a lot of people in this world, some living Wait, in... let us correct you. Oh, yes, please. You came here to explore vibrations. Explore. You did not come here to experience suffering. Okay. You did not come here to experience suffering. You knew that it existed here, but you never meant to get stuck in it. You never meant to, 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 to explore that vibration for, for days and months and years. You did, not, you did not come here to experience suffering. You came here to explore vibration and frequency. So, okay, thank you for the clarification, and that does make sense. So for people, humans... Who um, lets I, I am my understanding is that we are picking the circumstances that we come into, picking the family of origin, picking the country, picking some of the potentials for certain life circumstances, illnesses, tragedies, traumas. So it's very hard when, as a human, I have forgotten in many ways the big non-physical perspective of of that it can be without suffering. How can we come here and encounter some of these life experiences and not suffer some of the horrific, at least from a human perspective, I, the things that seem pretty tough? How can so we give us an example? Uh, okay, so um, let's say right now the people who are born in Syria, who are being gassed by their government, who are unable to be, even be refugees in our country, how? If they have picked that soul experience to come in here and learn, how is that possible without some suffering? So, so we're gonna we're gonna talk two things about this. Number one, what what you should be most concerned about is is how something that's happening halfway across the planet can cause you to suffer. It is the reason it can cause you to suffer is because of your thoughts and your judgment and your feeling. Uh, about about something else that's happening to someone else. That's what's causing you to suffer. It's not happening to you. It's not in your space. It's not in your environment. You, you, you turn on the news and you go looking 
for something to feel bad about. It's, it's not happening to you, right, our friend? Right, right. right. Okay. So, so, so most of the time when, when you all are suffering, it's, it's not even happening to you. It's happening to someone else somewhere else, and that's not your job. That's not your job, and we're going to explain why it's not your job. If, 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 you, if you worked, if you, if you had a job, and, and your boss, the most important person in your whole company, maybe it's the CEO or the president of the company, came to you and said, Sonny, I have a big, big assignment really important which we are going to liberate millions of people over over lifetimes but but I have a big job what would you say would you be interested in maybe that job of course if it, if it served and, and and liberated millions of souls to know their divine true nature of course but Sonny, this is not going to be an easy job. It's going to be very, very difficult. And you could stay home in your home and go home every night to your wonderful partner and your dogs and your warm bed and your, your beautiful clothing and your food. But, but this assignment that I have for you might not have all of those luxuries. Do you still want to go? Yeah. Why would you want to go, our friend, if it's not going to have all the luxuries? of your life right now, the way you know it. Because it's serving a greater purpose. Because it's serving a greater purpose. So the same thing happens in the divine plan for manifesting a new earth where there is peace and harmony and abundance for all because all beings live in alignment with their truth, liberated, free, and 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 in the vibration of oneness and unity and love. But, but sometimes you have to go in and, and do what you would call the dirty job in order, in order to, to serve in the highest and best good for all. And so sometimes it's the most, the most advanced, oldest, wisest souls, the, the, the ascended masters, the, the, the highest of them all that come in and take roles to be gassed by their own government or to be gunned down in the street. If, if you think of Martin Luther King and, and, and if, if the universe said, we, we need you to go to Earth, and there's, 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 there's prejudice and, and there's segregation, and, and people are being gunned down in the streets, but we need you to go, and we need you to talk about peace and freedom and, and, and acceptance for all people. And it's not going to be easy. Your family's going to be threatened, and then you're going to be gunned down in your hotel at some point. You still came. He, he shined the light on a better way. He, he changed things for for African American people, you, you you have expanded lifetimes beyond where you ever would have gotten with, without some of the, the the way showers that came forth, but but from your perspective paid the highest price with their life and suffered. The same goes for Jesus. He he it's, it's been. 2,000 years in your earth time since he walked the earth, and yet he's the most talked about person that's <laughs> ever lived. Yeah. And he came, and, and, and he was nailed to a cross. But, but he didn't care about the suffering from, his, from a soul's perspective. This, there are numerous examples of, of the, the way showers coming in and creating incredible transformation by by going through what you would consider something awful. Yes. But they answered the call just as you would and have to to serve in 
and to be in service of something so much greater than yourself. So where this causes suffering is, is, is from your limited viewpoint. You don't see it this way. You don't understand the soul's journey. You don't understand the divine plan from your personality. Your soul does. The, the, the grander part of you, the real part of you, it knows all of this. We're not telling you anything you don't know. We're just trying to help you remember. Because from your limited viewpoint, as a, as a, as a personality in a human body, you, you don't understand, you don't see this grander perspective. And so you start judging whether it's good or bad or right or wrong. And the second you start deciding that it's wrong and it's bad, you start pushing against, you create resistance, and the more emotion you add to that resistance, the more you will suffer. Does this make sense to you? Yes, and I actually, that's absolutely what I came into this, believing about the way that our cosmos works, that this is all in service of something greater, and while, you know, it's kind of a momentary blip in the grand eternal timeline when we come in some some lives it, from the appearance on the outside from a human perspective, it appears to be great suffering. So then it makes me wonder, though, I feel then for those that are coming here to do this greater work, who are the, the Martin Luther Kings or the people in Syria, then what about us here? First world problems. You know, we just want to have a more comfortable living space. We want to have work that we can rely on. We want to have relationships that are fruitful and provide us a nurturing home environment. <laughs> Then it makes me feel like, who am I to deserve to ask for that? Something even better when we've got people that are doing this big work. Is it all equal in the eyes of... It's all equal in the eyes of source. Okay. And, and so, so we'll give you another example. And we know you know this, but, <laughs> but you, you are here starring in your own movie. You are the Academy Award winning actress in the movie of your life. And you are the script writer, and you are starring in this. You're deciding who else you're starring in these movies with. You decide what the plot is. You decide what the storylines are. You're deciding. And, and so you, you look at an actor that would go into a movie, and they would play a Holocaust victim. Well, why, why would some actor ever choose that role in a movie? Besides the role that they could choose to just live this grand, magnificent life and fly around in private jets all day. Right. Why would they choose that? For the fun of it. Because yeah. it's a new role. It's exploring a new role. It's exploring a different frequency. It's exploring a different vibration. It's exploring a different role. It's exploring different emotions. It's exploring different scenes. It's all for exploration. And that's why that even if you got everything that you wanted today, our friend. It's all here for you, and it is. The, the, the money, the purpose, the, the, the career, the, the house, all of it. It's all here. If you got it all today, you would still wake up tomorrow wanting more. Hmm. Wanting something more. Yeah. Because the more that you're looking for, you could have all the physical stuff that you want, but the more that you're looking for is, is your connection to source. The more that you're looking for is the love that you know is here for you. Yeah. Creating with that. Living in alignment with that. Because, because what you're really looking for is, is that absolute trust and faith. What you're really looking for is what's possible for you in the human experience. What you're, what you're really looking for is the next adventure. Exploring what's next, growing, expanding, expressing more of who you are, manifesting new things. It, you're, you're always going to want more. However, where, where, you, where you cause your own suffering is where you decide you can't be happy until you have that more. And, and when you understand that everything is vibration, everything is vibration. You understand that, that what you're feeling about your life and about what you want and about what you have it determines what's coming for you. And so if you understand that everything is light, 
everything is light. Everything is light. Some of it is very, very slow-moving light. Some of it is all energy. Some of it's very dense energy. So if you're looking at a feather and you're looking at a rock, it, it, they're, they're different they're different vibrations. They're different levels of density. They're, they're all energy, but, but a rock is more dense than a feather. So, so if you wanted to move a feather, it'd be very easy. If you wanted to move a rock, it'd be very hard. And so, so if you want to manifest a feather, it might be easier than manifesting a rock. If, if, if you want to manifest a feeling, it'd be even easier than manifesting a feather. But if you understand that, that everything that you want is vibration, and we know you get, you get tired of hearing about vibration because we talk about it all the time, but when you understand this, when you get it, you'll get why vibration is everything. Because you, you can tune in to whatever you want through your vibration and have it now. And the more you can tune into it and, and feel the having of it now, the, the faster and the easier it will come. But it will not come easily and without resistance and without effort if you have resistance. So what, where does the resistance come? It becomes in your expectation. But I have to have it, and I have to have it now, and it has to be like this. And you are limiting the universe when you decide through your expectation how and when it has to be. And so, so that expectation makes you feel awful because you don't have it. It hasn't come. How's it going to come? But I, what I have right now, I've already expanded beyond it, and I want something more. And now all of a sudden you have resistance about it, which was, is holding it apart from you. And on top of it, you don't feel very good while, while you're waiting for that thing to manifest. But if you can, in this now moment, tune in to the, the frequency, the vibration of love and oneness and peace and harmony with all things and joy and, and trusting that everything's unfolding perfectly, trusting that there's a, there's a plan for your life, trusting that, that there's a divine plan for you, that there's a divine purpose for your life, that your soul's desires are always in alignment with this, that, that your your the imprint of your soul has been programmed with the experiences, the places, the things, it's all here for you. And it, and it will all come for you. You can't get this wrong. But it can be easy and effortless or it can be miserable. And this is why sometimes you, you manifest unwanted things or you have, you have created unwanted things through negative emotion and, and even those unwanted things serve in great ways. Serves in great ways. Because you, you realize that, that when you shift things, everything changes. And it's instant. It's instant. Does this make sense to you, our friend? Yes. So if you're, if you're sitting right now in a situation of something unwanted, it is not because of what you're thinking right this second, it's what you were thinking up until now that created the manifestation of this unwanted thing or the negative emotion that you were feeling until now that created this unwanted thing. So where all of your power lies is understanding that in this now moment, through your vibration, you are creating your next now moment and your next now moment and your next now moment. Mm -hmm. So in this now moment, you are either expressing love you are either expressing your divine power, your divine light, your divine love. You are either expressing and living in alignment with this, in, in flow with the universe, or you are suppressing it. You are either expressing it and allowing it through you, or you are suppressing it. So if you are in resistance, if you are suffering, if you are, if you are frustrated, if you are stressed, if you are worried, in this now moment, you are suppressing the, the love and the vibration and the power and the light that is all here for you. And the second you come back to this now moment and take a deep breath and, 
and focus your thoughts on appreciation and feeling better and accepting where things are and trusting, knowing it's all coming together, allowing things to work out for you, whoop, instantly go back into expressing love, go back into expressing the divine through you. And that will change your next now moment and your next now moment and your next manifestation and your next real, real life situation and your next, next, what, what present here for you physical experience. Does that make sense? Yes. And I have a follow-up question. Very good. Keep going. <laughs> so you mentioned, um, and I've heard Sarah speak of this before, just reaching for that higher vibration. And you mentioned a moment ago, gratitude and love, you know, I don't know about the rest of the people listening, but I need tangible steps. And so, for example, when I get up in the morning, if I feel my vibration is a little bit low and I'm heavy, I'm not feeling that love, that expansive, like, motivate, inspired energy, I do what I call emotional speed dial. And I go to sources like like you guys. I, I turn on the council. I listen to a podcast that I know is inspiring like what, as humans living in linear time, when we wake up in the morning, reaching for that higher vibration, what tangible steps can you guys suggest for us to get to that higher vibration, to reach so, for it? We're going to give you a really simple analogy. If you walk into a dark room, you walk into a dark room, and you, you want it to be light, what do you do? Turn on the light. Right. So... So if you notice you're in a low vibration, then then turn on the vibration. Then, then turn on a different vibration. So so all of the things that you, you said are wonderful. Tune into our vibration. We're, we're, we're always holding the highest vibration for you. And hmm. when you listen to these again and again, you, you'll instantly be back into a higher vibration. The, the other wonderful way is to get out into nature. Nature is naturally high vibration and it will very quickly and easily tune your vibration back to its naturally high space. So, so, but then most of you would tell us, well, I don't have time every morning. I have to go to work. I have all these things I have to get done. I don't have time to go into nature. And, and then we say, well, then plan it into your day. Then, then plan nature into your day. Plan these things. So, so nature is a wonderful way. The, Listening to a beautiful piece of music is a wonderful way. Sitting down and writing down the positive aspects in your life is a wonderful way. Doing doing something creative, drawing, coloring, writing, doing something fun. But but so there's lots of things that you can do to shift once you realize you're you're not in the good vibration. And here's what we want you to understand that that when you start down this conscious path of living this way that we bring forth. And, and you, you, you make a conscious decision to manage your vibration, to be aware of it, to raise your vibration, to get into a better feeling place. Your, your vibrational set point is automatically going to start raising. You're going to start raising your vibration and raising your vibration and raising your vibration. And the, the thing you must be aware of is that, that when you go back into fear, it's going to feel more awful than ever before, and that's a wonderful thing. <laughs> when you go into lack and limitation and worry and stress, it's going to feel more, more constricting and, 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 and limited than ever before. When you, when, you, when you go into suppressing love, it's going to feel worse than ever before because you have raised your vibrational set point to a new place that your norm is now much higher than it used to be. But that is a wonderful thing because because the contrast will be so different, because it's going to feel so awful, you're going to catch it immediately. And instead of going for six months feeling <laughs> depressed and awful, you're going to go for six minutes. And then soon enough, you'll go six seconds. And you'll take a deep breath. You will you will think a better feeling thought. You will smile. You will go take a walk in nature, and, and you will feel better. And so, so understand that you are raising your vibrational set point, which is a wonderful thing that, that, that it's going to feel more awful than ever before to go back into the limited ways of thinking and being at, at lower vibrations. And by the way, for, for all of you listening to this, and especially you, our friend, <laughs> you, your vibrational set points are, are higher than the vibrational set point of the mass consciousness. 
So whenever you re-engage into the mass consciousness, you you are going to feel a a different vibration because of the vibration you have raised yourself to. Does this make sense? Yes, absolutely. So what what happens when you find yourself uh, in the in the mass conscious vibration and realizing that that without judgment, just awareness that it's that it's lower than where you are. Well. If, if you want to feel even worse, then you start judging the mass consciousness. You start mm. judging other people. You start judging how you're more spiritually evolved than them, and you're smarter, and you've read more books, and you have more information, and, and you start picking apart all the things that are wrong with them. And soon enough, you're going to be even even in a worse off vibration because you, you turn to judgment. And, and this isn't wrong. We have no judgment for it. We're just explaining to you what happens so that you're aware of it. So when you start going down into to, to looking halfway around the world and, and, and wondering how they could be suffering when you're so happy or, or you start judging other people or you start looking at the actions of someone else, like maybe this government in Syria and deciding that they're wrong and your way is right, then all of a sudden you, you're, you're in fear, you're in suppression, you're in resistance, and you feel awful. So as you start practicing this... And, you, you start letting things go a bit. You start realizing that the vibrational cost of, of looking at other things and judging them is really not worth it. The vibrational cost of turning on your television and watching war in <laughs> other countries is not worth it. Right. When you decide that turning on your, your politics and, and stressing about your stock market are not worth your vibrational resonance, your vibration, that the cost of these things is too high, then, then you'll stop doing them. And you'll start investing your, your focus and attention to the things that, that, that positively enhance your vibration. So this is what we talk about being your best self. The reason you woke up feeling not so, so vibrationally good was, was probably because you either did not get enough sleep, you didn't get enough water, you, you allowed yourself to get really stressed or upset about something. You, you got all in, involved in judging or looking outside of you. you. You started focusing on what you don't want. So, so it's, it's not that you're, you woke up and vibrationally somehow you, you just woke up off. It's because of the things that, that contributed to you getting, getting out of vibrational alignment. Does this make sense? Yes. So, so where you could be very efficient in your lives is building the processes and the systems to, to be your best self. So what does that mean? You, you get a certain amount of sleep. You know, you know how much sleep you need. You, so you drink enough water. You eat foods that are good for you. You, you. you spend your time doing things you love to do. You spend your time being creative. You don't, you don't make agreements to do things you don't want to do. You... You don't push against whatever your existing circumstances are. You accept them. You don't, you don't judge other people and what they're doing. And if, if you start living this way, you realize that your vibration is, is staying in a very consistent place most of the time. And if it's not, you can very easily look at what caused you to get out of vibrational alignment. Does this make sense? It does. Yes. Do you have a follow-up for us? <laughs> so I was just looking at the time. And I think we have time, at least for today, to do one more question, but it's a little bit shift in topic, if that's okay. Very good. Yes. Okay. So I have heard you all use the term New Earth a lot, and I'm curious from your perspective where we're headed as a species. You know, are we in the midst of an awakening, and, and why did you guys decide to come, come through when you did? That's a wonderful question. So, so you you are going through first. You're you're going through your own awakening. First, you're awakening to the truth of who you are, and 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 some of you are are way showers in this. And it doesn't mean you're 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 better or someone else is less than you are or any of that. You 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 chose to come in and and awaken to your truth. Remember your divine nature. Remember your vibration. Remember all that you intended. When, when you came here, you, you came to awaken to that fully in, in this now moment in your life. And then to be living more 
consciously more aware and, and more in alignment with oneness and unity. And, and you all want the same thing. You all want peace and harmony and love and abundance for everyone. And there's a part of you that knows that you are not separate, that you're all one. And so a part of you knows, and, and this is to your question earlier, that, that you have a wonderful life. You have all the things that you need in order to, to thrive in your life, but you know that not everyone does, and, and there's a part of you that wants that for everyone, that wants abundance and peace and love for everyone. And so when, when you awaken to your own truth, you realize you're not separate. You, you realize that, that you want this for everyone, and so this is contributing to the great awakening of of humanity, because as you awaken to greater, greater levels of who you are, when you find any place within you that is not of love and you heal it and transcend it, when you find any place within you that is not of peace and you heal it and you transcend it, when you find any place inside of you that, that does not accept someone or something and you transcend it and heal it, when you go within yourself and find any place within you that, that you have picked up a limiting belief that somehow you are separate, not enough, not good enough, not worthy, that you have to force an effort. When you find these, these, these limiting beliefs that you've picked up and you bring them to the light and you give them to the light and you transcend them into love and peace and joy and abundance within you, you contribute to to healing and transcending that in the mass consciousness of your human family. And this is, is, as you raise your vibration, you contribute positively to raising the vibration of humanity. This is what is meant by the great awakening. The great awakening. When you are awake, when you are conscious, you, you can't harm another. You can't steal from another. You can't judge another. You can't be prejudiced. You can't be violent. It's not in your vibration. You, you can't think of each other as separate. You can only know that you're one. So, so when you awaken and you contribute positively to the vibration, you are contributing to raising the vibration of the mass consciousness. As you raise that vibration of the mass consciousness, everyone begins to live in a world where, where there is love and peace and harmony and abundance for all. This is what is meant by the new earth. This is what is meant by the new earth. It's possible for you. It's, it's available. It's here for you now. And it's vibration. Does this make sense to you? It does. Absolutely. And you're much farther along than any of you realize. There's, there's so much that is contributing to the, the realization of the new earth. You're, you are well along the the plan of birthing the new earth, but, but the most important role that you have in it, the most important role that you have in it is you and understanding that, that if you're sitting alone in your house and you're, you're feeling stressed and worried, you're contributing to stress and worry on your planet. If you're sitting alone in your house and you are suffering, you are contributing to suffering. But the flip side is also true. If you are sitting in your home right now and you are feeling peace, in, in your heart, in your soul, in your being, you are contributing to the feeling of peace. And the same goes for love and joy and abundance. You think that just because you're sitting alone in your house that it only affects you, and that's, that's not true, our friends. It, it affects everything. That's how powerful you are. And as we have said, the vibration of, of love one of you connected into your truth, into your power, expressing love, feeling, feeling the divine love and light that you are, feeling peace and joy and love in your heart. One of you is in feeling that power through you is, is more powerful than a million that are not. So you have no idea in what ways you're serving the greater good, our friend, in what ways you're serving your human family, just by doing this, this incredible, what you call work, hmm. of remembering the truth of who you are. Yes. 
Does that answer your question, our friend? It does. And I just, I have to thank you so much for honoring all of the follow-up questions and honoring all the questions. And I know we ask the same thing over and over in a million different ways. And I know from everything you guys tell us, you don't get frustrated. You just send us light and love. But thank you from my perspective. Thank you with your, for your patience with us. <laughs> we're, we're here. To answer your other question, we're here because we promised we would be. Yeah. We're here because because if, if, if you are going to, to hike up a, climb up a mountain on a rope, you have someone at the bottom of the rope, and then you have the person that, that's climbing up the mountain that's attached to the rope. You're the one climbing up the mountain, hmm. attached to the rope. We're we're just here holding the rope, so so that you have an incredibly wonderful hike to the top of the mountain. So that that your journey of hiking that mountain is is wonderful, and that you can you can be rest assured that all is well. Does that make sense to you, our friends? We we are we are more of a team than you realize. We're here for you. We stay in non-physical so that you don't forget the truth of who you are. So we're always available to you. Thank and, you. And we're here now because you asked us, to mm-hmm. be, because we promised we would be here to help you remember the love that you are and all that is here for you and the way that you intended it to be. Thank you for holding the rope for us. <laughs> yes. Very um, good, our friend. Yes, and I, I, I would just... Um, would love to give you the floor for closure today with this wonderful session to bring us to completion from your perspective. We, we just tell you all that, that, that you are so very loved. You are important. You are worthy of your every desire. You, you deserve a, a wonderful, joyful life. Your, your perfect health your, your perfect wealth and abundance, your, your, your perfect harmonious relationships, all, all of that is here for you. And, and, and any time you're in motion to these things or you have some contact, it's happening for you. It's for clarity. It's, it's to help, help guide you more clearly to what you do want towards the divine plan for your life. It, and, and many times there's this skills and, and, and abilities that are coming in to serve you. Nothing's wrong. Nothing's wrong. If you are here for an adventure, and you can't get this wrong. But remember how very loved you are, how worthy and deserving you are, how important you are. You, you matter, and your life matters, and your dreams matter. Because you put those dreams in your heart when you came to this life experience, because you knew that those would be the things that would guide you to what you really wanted. So enjoy this experience. Explore, explore, explore. And you can anticipate. You can anticipate wonderful things coming. You can anticipate your desires coming and, and, and explore them and still be grateful and excited and happy about this now moment. So enjoy it. We love you. We love you. We love you. And with that, we are complete. Thank you so much. Thank you guys so much for listening today. Um, This was one of what I hope to be many series of question and answer sessions with Sarah Landon and the council, the most wonderful, loving, energetic presence that as I said, is holding the rope for us as we climb and we are more connected than we think with them. Um, so Sarah, are you back with us yet? If not- I am. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So Sarah, is there anything else that you want to bring uh, before we wrap up for today and close our recording? Oh, uh, well, I just really appreciate the opportunity to bring forth the council and and for them to be able to answer your questions it's just so i i learned so much from all of these conversations and i i think as they said you know we are we are taking thought beyond where it's been before we're we're taking our vibrations beyond where we've been before and i i can tell you that in my own experience um you know i've i've been through many similar things as you sunny and and divorce and 
and disease and disappointment and lots of different things. And I, I can look back at all of those things now and know that they were happening for me, that, that they were all part of my purpose and guiding me in my life. And when I apply the council teaching in my life, my life is more wonderful and exciting and joyful than I ever thought possible. And, and truly the teachings are sometimes they're just, they're so simple that we think it needs to be harder. And, (laughs) and really it doesn't. If we just apply it in our life, we can just make a profound and powerful transformation. Absolutely. So thank you so much, Sarah. And um, <laughs> yeah, thank you. This was fun. And yes, I hope we have many more conversations. Just the beginning. Yes. Well, thank you guys for listening. And that'll wrap up for today.